Hello and welcome to the spooky season. First off, let me introduce this character. This is Vega, my Utah raptor that I created. And she is sporting a fantastic little contraption here. A mask for a mask! A fantastic skull that has an added bonus. It even glows in the dark with awesome sigils. And I bet you're wondering how you could make something like this too. Well, look no further because in this short tutorial I'll show you exactly how to do this. Obviously the very first thing you're going to need is a raptor mask. Now, I do have a video on where to properly get these masks, but just to reiterate, you can find them at Targets in America if you're lucky, or you can go online to Amazon and purchase them. Once you have one and it's all painted up and ready to go, or even if it's a blank, you want to use saran wrap just to mask off the face. This will just simply protect the paint from peeling up as we stick down duct tape to make our pattern. Now, if you've made your mask as symmetrical as possible like I have here, you should just be able to tape up half of the face. That way you don't need to waste materials or waste expensive duct tape. Just keep sticking on pieces one by one, making sure that they're in small little bits as that will help them stick very close to the shape of the mask and not distort it in any way when making the pattern. I often get asked, how do you do patterns? And this is the best way I can describe it. When you're making a pattern to fit something perfectly snug, you want your pattern to be as precise as possible. Hence why I'm going through the effort of duct taping a face rather than just guesstimating the kind of shape I would need. And the end result speaks for itself. Once half the face is taped, it's now time to draw in however you want this to look. You could use real animal skulls as reference, or you could just kind of go for a fantasy vibe like I do, and just do whatever you feel looks spooky and cool. I loosely based the design off of some dinosaur heads that I'd seen, but other than that, the finished result came out looking a lot more fantasy RPG than I had originally intended. But it doesn't look bad, so that's a win-win in my book. Once all your pieces are drawn, you now have to cut them out. I do recommend using a nice sharp pair of scissors for this, as it will help you get as close as a pattern as possible. Once it's all clean, you just have to make one final adjustment, which is to cut out any bits that will not be showing, like the nostrils, this nasal cavity thingy that I can never remember the name of, <laughs> and of course you're going to need to cut the sort of dart to make this lay flat, because something always important to keep in mind is when you are making your pattern pieces like this, it needs to lay completely flat, otherwise it will totally distort the shape and not work at all for a project like this. Once it's done and ready to go, I use the 3mm foamies, which you can get at most hobby stores for like a buck and a half for this humongous sheet. I was able to completely trace my pattern for my skull on there, and I even had a bunch of excess left over, so I can save that for another project. Definitely worth investing in a couple sheets of this stuff. It is fantastic for multiple kinds of projects. With this centerpiece, I did something a little different. Because it's completely symmetrical right down the center of the face, I'm able to draw one side, flip it over, and then draw the other side, making one solid piece, rather than having four. Once everything's all drawn, get a nice pair of foam scissors and cut them out. Wow, the power of editing makes that go so quickly, doesn't it? When it comes to cutting out these tiny little shapes, I recommend using very teeny tiny scissors and making quick, rapid snips. The reason why you want to use something small like this, or an X-Acto knife, is so that you get a somewhat jagged edge, because that tends to make it look a lot more like bone, in my opinion. And it just looks cooler that way. Like, it's almost a, a weathering effect on it to make it simulate real bone. It looks cool, and it picks up paint very well. Definitely recommend picking up a small little pair of scissors like this. I think I got these for like 10 bucks at a local Walmart. Once you have all your edges cut out, it's now time to bevel the other edges. The reason why you want to bevel your edges is it makes it look a lot more natural and less like a chunk of foam. 
it does take a little bit of time to get a handle on how to do it good, but over the progress of doing it so many times, it'll just start to become second nature. You just barely clip at like a 45 degree angle, I want to say, all along the outside edge. Now, after I bevel the edges, I proceed to use the blunt edge of the scissors to just kind of scratch up the surface of the foam. What this does is it creates a weathering effect that will simulate a sort of texture on the bone so that it's not just flat. This part is totally and completely optional, so if you don't want to do it, you absolutely don't have to. This, on the other hand, you need to do. This is a heat gun or a heat tool in some states, and it basically just blasts controlled hot air at your foam. You can kind of see where it's slightly changing texture as the heat passes over it. What this is doing is it is completely closing any open cells in the foam. This seals it out from getting any sort of damage from the environment, as well as protects the foam from deterioration and stretching. I highly recommend getting one of these tools because they are so versatile and I use mine all the time, so it's definitely something that's worth investing in. The only thing I really do have to say is to please be careful when you're using it. This thing gets very, very hot. Once you have your foam heat sealed, it's now time to heat up the backside and you wanna get it very, very warm and malleable. The foam should be very soft and bendy all by itself. Once you get it to a good stable heat, use your hands to press it onto the mask and it should heat form into the shape. This just helps it sit very nice and snug and captures the shape of whatever it is you're cloning. So you can see it doesn't sit totally flat anymore. This is exactly what I want it to do. Continue with the heating and forming of the pieces until they all line up with the face. It will definitely take some getting used to, and if you have to heat it up again and again, that's okay. I do get people that ask a lot of times, you know, is there a substitute you can use for a heat gun if you don't have one? You can technically use a candle flame, but it takes forever for pieces this size. And I've seen some people use a hair dryer, but I tried a hair dryer back in the day and it never worked properly. So I, I don't know if I would recommend a hair dryer. Just save up the $15 and get yourself a heat tool. Once all your pieces are heat formed and ready to go, the last thing we need to do is bevel the inside edge. Now this will only be on the pieces where they actually connect together. So like the top of the head here gets a bevel as well as the front of the nose with the little bone bits that will also get a slight bevel on it. And of course the top of the head as well. Now the reason why you bevel these pieces particularly in this way is so that when you glue them together, they sit perfectly nice and flush against one another. If you need to make any adjustments, you can. Now there are two ways you can also attach this. You can either use high temperature hot glue, which I highly recommend the Gorilla Glue brand glue sticks because they are fantastic and they work phenomenally well. Or you can use contact cement. The only thing with using contact cement, you must use it outside. You must wear a respirator and you must make sure you let it dry completely. Also, you have to wear gloves with it. It is highly, highly toxic. The fumes from contact cement can and will kill you if you breathe them in. So please, if you choose to use contact cement, take the necessary precautions or use an adult's help to try and use it. Given how much stress it's worth for such a small project like this, I would highly recommend just going for the hot glue route like I did here. It's safer, it's quicker, it's easier. As you glue down these pieces, you can also strengthen the inside of them once it's dry by adding a nice bead of hot glue all along the inside edge. You can also see where I take my hot glue gun and I sort of rub the hot nozzle end along the edges here to melt any glue that seeped over the edges. I do this just to make it much more soft and flush. It just looks prettier. It doesn't really have any other function other than just it looks better. <laughs> so that's up to you if that's what you choose to do. If not, it should be fine. 
just as is. You can always snip it off with scissors if you need to. Once the mask is all glued together, you simply need to attach some magnets to the inside edge. Now, I chose not to glue my magnets to the inside of my actual raptor mask because I just didn't feel like I wanted to keep the magnets there permanently since this mask is only a temporary thing. But the magnets that are glued to the mask are indeed, or the skull rather, are indeed permanent. Now this next little portion I debated on leaving open, but I wanted it to be a much darker color, so I cut little strips of the one millimeter foam, which is significantly thinner, and then I just proceeded to beat it up with the end of an old screwdriver. The only reason I'm doing this is because it sort of weathers and creates a rough texture on the foam, so that when I use my heat gun, it will expand all the little holes and scratches I made, and it makes it look like old aged bone that you see within like the nostrils of stuff because I think it's it's some form of like cartilage in the bones I think I don't know I flunked anatomy <laughs> simply glue these pieces down on the inside of the mask and fit them into position and you'll see they create a nice little three-dimensional window oftentimes when you're working with something that tends to be one solid color Pulling in different textures and shadows is a great way to really help it stand out as a shape. I debated on doing a similar method using these bits of foam for angry looking eyebrows on this mask, but I opted to do something a little bit different, which you'll see in a little while. So just stay tuned for that. I feel it's also worth mentioning that the magnets I used in this mask are neodymium, I believe is how that word is pronounced. And you can find them at most hardware stores. I have some pretty chunky ones here just because I wanted an extra firm hold. And you can see now, we are ready to move into our final details. All of these crazy teeth. Now, this is definitely where, if you want to get really anatomical with your mask, you totally and completely can. I chose to go for more of like a fantasy spooky version of it, and I just absolutely went ham with the teeth. <laughs> I don't think any animal in history has quite as many teeth as I put on this thing, but it sure did come out looking kind of cool. It just has this real epic spooky vibe to it, and that's exactly what I was going for since this whole project was themed around being a nice Halloween spooktacular video. I'm just using Crayola Model Magic here, which is a really cheap, inexpensive air dry clay. And as I'm sticking these on, I do want to note that this in itself is not a permanent way to attach teeth like this or any kind of air dry clay modifications. When you just stick them on like this, they may hold well enough for the time being, but they will pop off in time. So you'll have to have a more permanent solution, which I will show you how to do in just a little bit. Two hours later. Holy smokes, okay. <laughs> After the teeth have all been sculpted and you've given it time to set, usually about 24 hours is more than enough, you need to pull them off of your mask and then re-glue them back down with hot glue or some other kind of tacky surface glue or adhesive. The only reason we glue them down is to make sure they have a much more secure foothold. When you're gluing stuff like this, you do want to make sure that it doesn't have any chance of popping off if you just lightly brush against it. And this air dry clay does tend to be very fragile, so it doesn't exactly work all that great if you bump into it. You can very easily break and chip things off. So keep that in mind as you're working on stuff. You'll notice that some of my teeth end up getting chipped as I worked on it, but ah, you win some, you lose some. Something I can advise about working with very long spikes like I have here on these eyebrows. You do want to avoid making shapes that are too long solely out of air dry clay because they are very prone to snapping since the material is very lightweight. Once all the pieces are glued down, it's now time to begin painting. And this is probably one of my favorite parts of crafting. <laughs> I love bringing the details out with paint. 
I'm just mixing up some antique white, which is kind of like an like a really deep ivory color. And then I also have some white that I've mixed here for my base coat. I think it took two base coats in order for this to become opaque enough that you couldn't see the black anymore and that all the details were blended into one solid color. If you use thicker paints, it will definitely help so that you have, don't have to use as many coats. And if you're still unsure, uh, you can put a layer of wood glue down before you do any painting. You'll just have to wait another 24 hours for that to dry completely. That will add structural stability to the mask, but it will also make it significantly heavier. So food for thought. Once your base coat is done, you can now move into doing the exterior details. I'm taking a nice deep brown here, and I'm adding a significant amount of water to the paint, and then just gently brushing the watered down paint on top, adding more water as needed. What I'm doing here is a type of wet brushing that when you do this, it kind of creates this really neat, ancient, weathered effect. It just looks really cool and antiqued. You can push and pull the pigments of the color using more wet paint as well as using a dry washcloth or a paper towel to kind of dab colors off as you work. There's so many different ways to do it. You could also use dry brushing or if you're fortunate enough to have an airbrush, you could airbrush these kind of details into the mask. Just keep working at it until you get something that you're happy with. I definitely worked at mine for quite a while before I was able to get an effect that I was pleased with. If you want more in-depth tutorials on how to do dry and wet brushing like this for weathering detail, please let me know in the comments and I might make a video especially about that. If not, then I'll just continue doing what I do. It's fun regardless and I love being able to share my content with you guys. Something else you can do once your paint is laid down and dried here is you can always add UV reactive paint to it, which is what I did after the whole process of painting was finished. I basically took a very highly reactive glow in the dark paint and just gently drew on some little sigils. When the paint is in its neutral state, it's almost like an off white color, which is kind of why I chose this particular shade for the skull itself. So that way when you're looking at it in the daytime, you wouldn't really notice the sigils unless you stared at them and noticed the texture difference. But it does make a super cool effect when you turn on the black light. <laughs> I love playing with black lights. I wish I would have done it so many years ago. It's so fun. Once all your painting is done and dried, the last thing you need to do is you actually have to seal it. I prefer to use Mod Podge Matte Spray and I usually give it a healthy coat. I had to use a little bit more here because it was very, very windy today and it made it quite difficult to try and get an even coat, but I was able to get it eventually. Once that's dried, it's time to begin. Hush, my baby, make no sound. Maybe we can wait each other out. It's a cold war. Let's go to war! I hope you really enjoyed this video. I definitely had a whole lot of fun bringing this mask to life. And I really wish I could use it for more videos rather than just spooky stuff, but it is definitely a fun project. And I hope it was, you know, informational for you to learn how to do something like this. Maybe you can apply these skills to other things. I would love to see what you're able to create if you do anything like this. It's always super duper fun when I get to see what people are able to create using my tutorials. You can always send me an email. It's in the description as well as on screen now, as always. <laughs> and of course, I have to do my Patreon shout out. I cannot thank these individuals enough. They do so much to support me and just keep my work alive and flowing. A huge shout out to my good friend Volt the Duchy for sitting at that gold tier for two months now. Like seriously, you are such an incredible supporter and every time you say something kind to me and you 
reach out to support me or share my work, I'm like, oh my god, I don't deserve you. You're such a fantastic friend. <laughs> I also have to give a shout out to my two silver tier patrons, Osmium Dragon and Draxfur. Thank you guys so much for your outstanding support. I think it's been like seven months of solid support now from Osmium, which is just incredible. And Draxfur as well is a fantastic supporter, as well as a wonderful cameraman and fursuit handler wherever I go. <laughs> so thank you so much, you guys. I also have $5 patrons as well at the bronze tier, and to which all of you I have to thank as well. Every little bit of support that I get is absolutely breathtaking and fantastic to me, and I wouldn't be here today if it weren't for these special individuals in my life, so thank you guys so much for your support. If you'd like to join them, you're more than welcome to. You can check out the link on screen, as well as in the description, that'll take you to my Patreon. I have multiple different tiers of multiple different things. And some tiers even offer free artwork. How fantastic is that? <laughs> But I do want to thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch this video. I know it was a little bit longer than some of my small content, and I'm trying to find a more stable time for working on things, but I think I spent like four days making this mask, so definitely uh, <laughs> be aware of that. Alrighty, thank you so very much, and I hope you have an absolutely fantastic day, and a happy spooky Halloween!